Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. If you've heard someone talk about Dragon Age Origins, you probably heard them talk about how amazing the Origins are, because frankly, no other game has handled the system quite this well since. In this video, we're gonna rank these different Origins, but let me just say up front, all of them are fantastic. There's really no way to go wrong. All of them are gonna expose you to the great cultures that Dragon Age has developed over time. All of them are gonna allow you very quickly to become a great warden. All of them connect you with some area or aspect of the game. So there's not a right or wrong option here. It's just a matter of what you prefer. And this ranking will probably help you figure out just that. Let me also say upfront, there will be no spoilers in this video. So if you haven't experienced Origins before, don't worry, you can watch this video and still be able to fully enjoy the game. With that being said, we're gonna continue doing Dragon Age content all month long. So if there's some video or aspect of Dragon Age you would like me to explore, be sure to leave a comment down below. If I can, before we get to Veilgar, I'll be sure to try to do it. So go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, hit that bell, so you don't miss any of my videos. Coming up at number six, Dalish Elf. So the Dalish Elf origin starts you off as a hunter within a Dalish Elf clan. You're going to be joining up with a childhood friend and together you all are going to investigate humans who have been venturing dangerously close to the camp and try to figure out what is it that's drawn them close to your area and whether or not this is a problem the clan is going to have to address. Unfortunately, things spiral out of control, and at some point, Duncan recruits you and takes you away to be a part of the Grey Wardens. A big advantage of choosing this origin is that playing as a Dalish Elf gives you a very unique perspective. These Elves have decided to try to retain as much of their original culture as possible, and so they distance themselves away from humans and have a completely different way of life. Becoming a Grey Warden thrusts you into a position where you're constantly surrounded by humans constantly in their cities, and so you're gonna get some unique dialogue opportunities that otherwise you wouldn't have. Unfortunately, the actual storyline you go through in this origin has very little reactivity in the rest of the game. So unlike the other origins that all kind of start you in one area, and then you go back and visit that area later on, and it allows you to reconnect with people and feel like you're connecting with some aspect of your past, Dalish Elf kind of lacks that. Now it should be noted that this section does have tons of reactivity to later games in the series, especially Dragon Age 2. You actually are gonna enjoy uh, Meryl's storyline, who's a companion in Dragon Age 2, significantly more if you have played through the Dalish Elf origin and then understand a lot of her motivations. But just keeping this video self-contained to Dragon Age Origins, I feel like Dalish Elf is probably the weakest of the group. Also, just as a side note, I think it's unfortunate that Bioware didn't find a way to include an option for you to be a Dalish mage because the Dalish have their own way of dealing with mages, which I think would be a very interesting way to start the game as opposed to being pigeonholed into having to be a circle mage. But I understand that would have required them to add a bunch of reactivity throughout the game as well. So I get why they skipped it, but just want to add that in. Moving on to number five, Dwarf Commoner. So playing as a Dwarf Commoner puts you in the role of a castless dwarf. And these are basically the peasants of Orzammar. They are treated like absolute trash. They basically have no rights and they live in the underbelly of the city. And you play as someone who's working for the Carta, which is essentially the Dwarven mob. This origin does a fantastic job of making you feel like you're stuck in the situation where you're at the bottom of the rung with no way out. Your family is equally destitute and it's obvious they can't help you either. So starting with the Dwarf Commoner origin allows your overall storyline to really have a rags to riches feel by the time you get to the end of the game when you're swimming in gold and have become a well-respected Grey Warden, which is an absolutely great feeling. Also, the reactivity you get when you come back to Orzammar is really nice because some of the people that you meet here, they really feel like you're friends and you're concerned about them when your origin ends. 
And so it's really nice to try to reconnect with them and understand what has happened in your absence. All the way around, Dwarf Commoner is fantastic. Next at number four, City Elf. So unlike the Dalish who have decided to stay in the outskirts in the forest and stay isolated away from humans, city elves basically have chosen servitude under the humans. So they live in alienages within human cities and they are treated absolutely horribly. So you're gonna start as a character in one of these alienages and you're betrothed to another elf. This storyline is really nice because not only do you develop some connections with some of the people around you, but just in general, you feel connected to the alienage. It feels like home and it's really meaningful when you're able to finally return to it much later on in the game. City Elf, very similar to Dwarf Commoner, has a rags to riches story. I put it slightly above Dwarf Commoner because City Elf is the only origin that actually changes a bit depending on whether you're a male or female. In my opinion, female City Elf is a significantly more impactful experience and it just feels really, really awesome to start the game in this manner and then slowly become this lethal warrior who's also a shining example of everything that an elf can be. The story does an amazing job of making sure that really just hits you in the chest. Also, City Elf is one of the few origins where a decision you make can have an ending slide that really matters. If you make the choices that cause that slide to come up, it's going to hit you in the chest like a ton of bricks. And I thought that was really, really amazing. The only call out that I would have regarding City Elf is that it's incredibly intense. And there are definitely some people who have played it and said that it was honestly way too intense for them. And when they finished it, they decided to replay the game and choose a different origin because it was just triggering, it was too much, they couldn't handle it, and felt like they'd be thinking about that origin the entire game, so they decided to go in a different direction. So, City Elf is definitely not for the squeamish, not for the faint of heart. If you know you're that type of person, don't choose this, but if you're not, I absolutely recommend you go ahead and give it a try. Coming up next at number three, Human Noble. So Human Noble starts you as a person who's a part of a noble family, and your father is playing host to a bunch of friends who have come to your castle. I'll be honest, I think the reactivity to being human is really kind of bland, especially when you compare it to what you get as an elf or dwarf, but the Human Noble story has a very, very strong emotional pull. Now, you don't cash in on that pool until you get into the end game of Dragon Age. So unlike some of the other origins who have their reactivity more so sprinkled into the middle, so you can kind of get closure regarding your origins much faster, Human Noble, you don't really get a chance to directly address what happened to you until much closer to the end of the game. But the emotional pull of your story is so strong that I feel like even though the game doesn't necessarily directly reference it a ton, you still feel it throughout the game. And unlike the other origins, Human Noble, what happens to you, feels very, very close to the main story. And so consequently, it's almost like you have your own personal reasons for hating the villains on top of the reasons that everybody else has. Also, playing as Human Noble gives you more options as far as how to handle the end game than any other origin you can choose. And so all the way around, while the majority of the game playing as a human noble doesn't really matter, when you get to the end, it matters so much at a time that is most crucial that it makes me put it higher up on the list. Next at number two, we have Mage. So unlike all the other origins, this one is actually tied to your class. You can only choose a mage if you are human or an elf. Dwarves are not capable of using magic. And if you choose mage as your class, then you're automatically locked into this origin where you play as a young mage who's undergoing an initiation rite. So this origin is really, really cool because you meet lots of interesting characters and there's great reactivity when you come back to the Circle Tower and meet them again. 
Also, unlike some of the other origins you can play, you have real options here as far as how you handle the situations that are presented to you. So some of the other origins, it kind of gives you choices, but most of the choices are either do the right thing or do something that's so horrible and terrible that it'll just stick with you the entire game. You know, it doesn't really feel like a choice where, man, I'm not sure which way is the right way to go. Whereas I feel like Mage does a little bit of a better job with that. Also, honestly, playing the game as a Mage just feels right. There is a ton of reactivity throughout the game for being a character who's a Mage. Dragon Age just does it properly. The lore that surrounds Mages and the Fade and Demons is just absolutely fantastic. And you're gonna get an early start on all of that playing through this origin. And while you do get a couple of Mages as party members, you can build yourself up as a mage much, much better than they can, especially if you don't have a mod that's going to allow you to respect your characters. And so it's honestly really nice from a mechanical standpoint, having access to a mage that's built exactly the way you want them to be. So all the way around, playing as a mage is fantastic. But there can only be one top dog. And for me, it's pretty much always been the same ever since I played this origin. Dwarf Noble. Dwarf Noble is absolutely amazing. So as opposed to Dwarf Commoner, which has you playing as a castless, Dwarf Noble has you playing as a member of the ruling noble family. It is, in my opinion, the best storyline out of all the origins, and it's absolutely the longest out of all of them. There are tons of reactivity just for being a dwarf in general. But out of all of the origins, Dwarf Noble feels the most like you're coming back home when you finally visit Orzammar later in the game. Everybody knows your name. Everybody knows who you are. Everybody knows what happened to you. And everybody has an opinion about what happened. It feels absolutely fantastic. Also, not only is your origin story longer, but it's got more layers. There's a lot of different moving parts happening, and it's a big emotional pull for you to want to return back to Orzammar. Also, this origin just feels right when you get to the end game. There's a lot of political intrigue that you have to deal with, and it absolutely makes sense that you as the Dwarven Noble have an understanding of how to navigate this type of situation. As a human noble, of course, you are a member of the noble family but it always seems like your father is the one who's really dealing with the politics and you're not necessarily a knowledgeable person about those matters whereas when you're a dwarven noble it definitely seems like you're one of the people rolling up your sleeves getting your hands dirty and understanding how the game is played so all the way around dwarven noble is just a fantastic time i really enjoyed it and personally I feel like Dwarven Noble is the best origin in the game. And that's it. That's my list. Dwarf Noble is my personal favorite. I think it gives you the absolute best experience, but I'm sure many of you have a different opinion. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Which origin do you personally prefer to play? Looking forward to seeing your feedback. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.